Hello folks, welcome to the Apple Football Club on YouTube. We are the original football exclusive APA site to appear outside of the Delphi forums going online in 2011. We are back after a bit of a hiatus 10 years after our launch. And here today, as a function of our desire to produce an APA football handbook along the lines of the the extraordinary ultimate guide to APA baseball cards produced by the legend of the game, Ed Zach. We are here to talk about, very briefly, the typographic history of APA football. Now, APA football, for those of you who do not know, is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, statistically based simulation of American football introduced in 1958 by company founder J. Richard Seitz. The game was labeled the 1959 edition, presumably for shelf life purposes, and it allowed you to replicate the 1957 season. Quite prescient that it appeared in 1958, of course, the Colts and Giants engaged in that uh, overtime championship duel dubbed the greatest game ever played. For those of you who are type geeks, design nerds, aesthetic aficionados, Apple football is one of the most Lovely, lovely to look at games you can imagine. Again, because it is of a particular vintage, it's really reminiscent of that vintage letterpress uh, uh, style, vintage print shop. It's got that very uh, a Christmas story kind of a feel, if you will. That aesthetic uh, particularly shines through in the initial series of cards. Apple Football, like many games, has undergone many revisions throughout the years, and we will document its history in other videos, uh, some of which might come from our archives or some of which we might produce uh, brand new here, fresh for 2021. But let's get to the typography, shall we, folks? Now, I am a, a type nerd and design geek myself. I've put thousands and thousands of newspaper and magazine pages, front pages, double trucks, you name it, to bed at very early or perhaps late, depending on how you look at it, hour, hours of the uh, night or morning. And uh, I can tell you that uh, Apple football is as much fun to look at as it is to play. It's also a great playing game as well, and we'll, we'll talk about that in future episodes here. But for now, let's take a quick look at the aesthetic of Apple football. As I said, the game was introduced in 1958 to allow you to replay the 1959 season every player who is a primary player uh, features a card with a series of numbers on it to allow you to replicate running passing kicking fumble recoveries etc all facets of the football game are represented by these cards and allow you to read results on separate results boards which we will document the typography of as well so from the 1957 to 1963 NFL seasons, APA chose a wonderful slab serif font and included its trademark football design on the back of the card in an orange-red color. Now, for those of you who are not typographers or typographically inclined, a slab serif font is a font that has a serif that is a very strong stroke or line, as opposed to a more delicate font like a Cheltenham or a Bodoni that has a thick to thin, uh, more decorative line at the ascenders and descenders of the type. Now, notably, the 1959 season does not feature parentheses around each player's point allocation. The way the game works very briefly is each player on your starting 11 for offense or defense gets a point rating, a point allocation. By adding up your offense and your opponent's defense, you determine which results index, A, B, or C, the offensive team operates in as you use the results boards. So each player has a point total from 1 to 5. And the original card sets featured 30 players as the rosters, of course, were smaller then. Now, the 1964 season sees a complete change, not only for the NFL, but the introduction of the American Football League set, the first official APA release for the AFL. Of course, if you are a fan of the NFL, 
You recall that the AFL was viewed as inferior at the time, and perhaps APA took a gave a uh, some credence to that that theory. But in to its credit, to the company's credit, in 1965 for the 1964 season, Mr. Seitz issued the first AFL set for APA football. These feature a really one-off, never before seen never seen before or since that set, rather, uh, a very small slender sands that you see here. And, and every card features the player's last name in the all cap bold, the most prominent typography on the card. And these AFL cards feature the, the now iconic purple backs. At the same time, the 64 NFL season underwent a typographic change as well, but with a different sans serif that you can see here. It's a, a little larger. Uh, it's, it's maybe a little square, I guess you might say, in terms of the kind of the X height and the, the overall uh, composition of the typographic footprint, if you will. Um, now, this... 1964 NFL season typography lasted until up to and including the 1968 NFL set. In 1965, the AFL seasons likewise featured this typography also through the 1968 season. And the 1965 to 1968 AFL sets still boasting those purple backs while the NFL sets... Uh, now featured from 1965 to 68, uh, a more bright red back. In 1969, the season before the NFL merger, we see yet another not seen before or since font change for both the NFL and AFL cards. There's yet another sans serif font, a little narrower than the 65 to 68 variant or the 64 to 68 variant if you're talking about the NFL expressly. Uh, it's notable that the Apple baseball cards shared this 1969 season font. 69 Mets, folks. And in the 1969 set, the NFL and AFL for the last time sport their respective red and purple backs. Now, the 1970 to 84 era comes next for folks of my generation. I'm 55 and I started playing in 1979, being a fan of the 78 and 79 Steelers and all Steelers teams, of course. The 1970 to 1984 Apple football cards, and I believe the baseball cards, I'm not sure the year range for baseball. I believe, I think they did chain, share those. We have a when we launched our site, we uh, created a, a, a huge collection, acquired a, a huge collection, built a huge collection, really, of, of all our sets. So um, we'll um, put some baseball cards next to our football cards for comparison as we go forward here in pursuit of an Apple football handbook. But in 1970, we see the launch of the larger rounder sans serif for last names. And I've got a, a note in my file here that uh, we see a more Futura-like series of numbers for the RPK, that's run, pass, kick, results, columns. Now we note in 1982 the appearance of the QS rating on defensive players' cards. Of course, in 1982, the NFL began officially chronicling player sack totals, whereas before it had been a little more um, anecdotal and apocryphal, I suppose. Uh, but in 1982, you see the QS rating up, appear on defensive players' cards, and the injury rating, the J symbol, moves to the bottom left. The J rating was introduced in the 1972 revision and upgrade of the Apple Football Results Boards and Rules. Now, in 1985, we see yet another wholesale change in the typography, this time a return or a a, a, a well a return to a serif font but a more delicate font uh, it's got a little more um, articulation here as opposed to the slab serif here and this lasts through the 2010 season with some variations in the mid 90s as company ownership changed hands after the passing of uh, founder j richard seitz from 1985 to 2010 the last names of these cards 
feature that bigger serif font of varying thicknesses with notable changes in thinness or boldness in the late 80s to early 90s and then the mid-90s sets. Now, when the company changed hands, there were some, uh, uh, there were some difficulties and some doubt as to the company's survival. There were some attempts to make the game of Apple football more palatable, some repackaging of the results boards and the box, and the cards reflect some of these year-to-year changes. The 1999 season, sold as the 2000 edition, features yet another one-off typographic scheme. Now, in this season, we see full-color cards designed with team logos and featuring three generic results cards for players who did not have stats. The number of carded players per team varies widely, with a fold-out sheet listing the uncarded players and their rules and points. That's a function of the playability and um, perhaps a cost-saving method by the company at the time. But you see these cards feature a a darker kind of look, an attempt to make the cards perhaps a bit more aesthetic. The weight of the paper, the stock, is a bit sturdier than some of the uh, seasons that uh, followed. And that kind of harks back to the sturdiness of the paper of the very earliest card sets. Now, in the 2011 season, the new seasons going forward representing current NFL players, as well as reissues of um, sets that were recalculated to be used with the master boards and master rules that first emerged in that 1982 season, this, this current crop of cards reverts to sans serif typography yet again. It's a little more generic than some of those earlier uh, serif, sans serifs, and the cards for a while were not produced individually. They were instead issued as on perforated letter size paper with square, square sides, square corners, and you had to pull the cards apart. Thankfully, the company has gone back to in, in printing each individual card uh, separately with the vaunted round corners that uh, we Apple folks are adamant about. If you spend about a minute or two with any Apple player, you'll hear about those rounded corner cards for sure. Now, what I've just uh, been reading to you from is uh, a file that I created on June 28th, 2012, documenting the evolution of Apple football. We had published a lot of articles on Facebook. Uh, When we took our hiatus, we kind of squirreled away our content. We hope to reissue some of this in new forms going forward, but we hope you enjoyed that look at the typography of Apple football cards. As I say, in our quest since our launch in 2011, we aim to document uh, a lot of the history of the game in a way that had not been done or at least not visually presented in um, the Delphi forums between the lines and outside the lines predominantly. Please stick with us to go forward into more in-depth looks at the result boards, which started these, these big white behemoths and have now evolved into bound uh, booklets of uh, play results as well as a look at the evolution of the football fields from that original sturdy slotted uh, wonderful wonderful version to the contemporary versions and some custom versions too there's a lot of customization that goes on around apple football in terms of uh, method of play innovations and customizations down to field customizations, customization of the envelopes that hold the player cards. It's it's a really expansive universe when you get into the game, and the fact that it has endured for so many years makes it, again, a pleasure to behold visually as well as in terms of using the game engine. So with that, we'll sign off for now. Thank you, as always, for your time and attention. And join us again at the Apple Football Club as we explore Apple football in all its facets.